it's, there's two different types, types of information if you get into, into the information sciences. There's the information, the, me, the mathematical measure of, of information as provided by the famous information theorist Claude Shannon. And, there's a, and DNA has that kind of information. It has a, a measurable amount of information. But the, the mathematical theory of information doesn't tell you whether the information that you're dealing with is meaningful or functional on the one hand or simply an improbable arrangement of characters, in a sense just an information-carrying channel which may or may not have any functional information in it. The crucial thing to understand about DNA if you look at these two strings of characters, we don't just have a complex or improbable string of characters like the one on the top. We have a string of characters in which the arrangement of characters is specific to perform a function. It's informational more in the sense that most of us recognize information as having meaning or function. It, these sequences in DNA perform a communication function. They direct the, the, the construction of these crucial physical systems, these, these, these mechanical parts called proteins, okay? So when Francis Crick was clarifying the nature of the discoveries that were taking place in molecular biology in the late 1950s, he said when we talk about information in DNA, and he's aware of the Shannon idea of just measurable improbability, he says that we're not just talking about improbability, we're talking about a precise arrangement of things. So by information, he says, I mean the specification of the amino acid sequence and the protein. They're all in the right sequence, all in the right order. Or we mean the precise determination of the sequence in the case of the bases in, in the DNA molecule. So we're not talking about information in a merely mathematical sense of measurable improbability. We're talking about it as a functional sequence, something that is precisely arranged with respect to the, the requirements, the functional requirements of an organism. Now, that, so that's the, the, when we're talking about the DNA enigma, that's what we're talking about. It's the origin of that kind of information, information that is very closely, is very similar to what we have in, a, in a, our own digital technology. Where did that kind of information come from? How did that arise? Now, I first learned about this mystery, this, what I'm calling, the DNA Enigma, from a scientist named Charles Thaxton, who'd written a book in 1984 called The Mystery of Life's Origin. And it was a very comprehensive critique of these attempts to explain the origin of the first living cell from simpler non-living chemicals, what's called chemical evolutionary theory. And it was chapter and verse. I mean, it was a very devastating critique of the standard models. And, <clears throat> uh, and what Thaxton pointed out was that there are lots of reasons these models fail, but the fundamental reason is that they can't explain the origin of information. And now this brings us back to the starting point of the lecture. Do we have in the simple cell an appearance of design? In fact, an appearance of design that has not been explained away by purely unguided, undirected materialistic processes. We do. And the most striking appearance of design or at least one of the most striking appearances, there are many at the microscopic level, is the, is the presence of this digital code, especially when we understand what it's doing. Uh, Richard Dawkins says that the machine code of the genes is uncannily computer-like. Apart from differences in jargon, the pages of a molecular biology journal might be interchanged with those of a computer en engineering journal. We have digital code, we have replication, all this, the, the, this intricate information processing system. Bill Gates, the, the, our local hero out in the, in, the, in the Seattle area, says DNA is like a computer program, but far more advanced than any that's ever been created. Well, at the very least, uh, from these statements, we can see that we have a striking appearance of design. The question is, has that appearance, the appearance conveyed by the digital information in DNA, been explained by any undirected, unguided materialistic process.